Good morning, sir. Good yes. afternoon, ma'am. How do you pronounce your name, Sudan? What is it? Sudan Abdullah. Sir. Sudan. Sir. What is the meaning of Sudan? Sudan doesn't seem to be. Which language is this? Sudan. It is in uh, Tamil as well as in Hindi. It's called uh, tran means sun, sir. Sun. Sun. Okay. Sun means S O N sun or S O N sun. S O N sun. Oh, so that is uh, okay. 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 Supposing we know, hmm? all right. So, um, you had uh, political science and international relations as your uh, option, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay. International relations have been changing over the years. Yes, sir. So, when do you think? Can you tell me the? Main landmark changes which have taken place. Let us say after World War II. Okay. Sir. Let us take World War II. When did the World War II take place? From which year to which year? 1939 to 1945, sir. Okay. Almost. So from then onwards till now, there have been some very very major changes in international relations. Sir. Can you very briefly tell that this happened and this happened and this happened and this is the present scenario and this is the direction in which international relationship is moving. Hmm? Very brief. Yeah, please. After the end of uh, World War, it seemed like uh, we are moving towards more integration and the United Nations was a symbol representing that uh, global communities were coming together. Thereafter, the two blocks, Soviet and cap uh, capitalist blocks, they result. Uh, they emerged, and it uh, created a sort of Cold War situation, where there was no direct military conflicts, but there were many other skirmishes. And uh, finally, uh, with the disintegration of Soviet Union, we see the end of the Cold War, and uh, later we find the reemergence of a unipolar world, where U.S. dominates for a particular period of time. But this unipolarity did not last for long and soon we see that other fault lines are opening up like the terrorism and uh, other global conflicts emerge and uh, China's emergence has resulted in a challenge to US as well. So now we are considering this era as somewhat of a unipolarity where there are various power what, centers. What, what polarity? Unipol uh, multipolarity. No, multipolarity, yeah, that's what. Hmm. So the unipolarity of uh, United States has been challenged, and now we see a multipolar world where various blocks like the European Union, Russia, China, uh, India, they all are somewhere seek a balancing and counterposing some of the moves from United States. Which do you think is better, a multipolar world or a? Bipolar world or unipolar world, or which would be in the best interests of humanity? A more integrated world where there is respect for international law would be in the best interests of humanity. Okay, why is it that international law is not uh, working the way it, sh it should? You know, with all the talk about. Uh, uh, equality, this, that. There is so much in inequality which is becoming more and more serious. Sir. In fact, you know, we are entering a kind of uh, new neo imperialism of a very serious nature. So, where do you think it will lead us to? The absence of global policemen to enforce the international norms that has been the major impediment. Okay. We see that the UNSC has been given the primary role to enforce any law and when UNSC members themselves they go against any of the international norms, there are no concrete steps by which we can overcome the veto of any UN power. So these superpowers, the global order, the international norms are dependent upon the will and uh, of these superpowers. Do you think uh, someday the world will be, will again become unipolar? China is the supreme power. The, regarding unipolarity, there is a. In order to become a superpower, there is a theory where we need. Uh, there are some basic uh, conditions which a country should meet. 
for example china uh, does not uh, has lot of challenges from various power centers around it for example russia it is a neighbor of india as well as russia both of them are a uh, regional blocks and they are always counterposing china when we take the example of united states it was almost in uh, the sole power in that continent it did not have any regional tensions so all uh, uh, then we have the challenge about china it uh, it is not ruling really, uh, china it calls itself a democracy but there are very various criticism that it is imposing its the will upon the people so there are very uh, there are various fault lines which can always uh, be exploited and uh, used to trigger tensions and uh, finally china's population itself if you see the gdp per, uh, per capita uh, for a superpower it should be uh, it doesn't really seem like china is immediately catching up with the western nations or united states per se and the military expenditure as well united states military expenditure is far far more almost three or four times more than china so all these have Very an impediment good. good answers yeah please yeah um, you have been serving in crpf right now yes ma'am uh, can you tell about what uh, day to day issues are you facing in the uh, sanjeevni hill which uh, as an administrator you would have better solved it or better resolved the issues you must be noticing the any kind of uh, issues which a tribal community faces or the biodiversity in that region uh, could be facing because of interventions or exploitation okay, so i just now came to sanjeev you are not I, for a long time uh, i came only on last year august mm -hmm. i was serving four years in dantewada ma'am actually mm. uh, but here also we, the major conflict issue in sanjeevni hills has been man animal conflict mm. so we are having uh, elephants primarily uh, intruding into human habitats for the sake of uh, fodder mm. and uh, this has been a major uh, fault line in this area ma'am mm. and uh, uh, there has been also civilian casualties where villages have got trampled and recently there was one incident where a uh, trucker was also trampled by an elephant mm. so this caused create some sort of fear among the people and uh, they uh, they resent the intrusions so they are using somewhere uh, the electric lines and all uh, mm. to fence their uh, uh, fence their cultivations so who is the victim here now we are they are using dc currents ma'am so no i'm asking who is the victim according to you in this <coughs> their conflict issue and the uh... the victim uh, we, we cannot conclude ma'am for example that uh, trucker who went they did not notify no, i'm asking about the human animal conflict yes ma'am uh, both of them are sometimes at the receiving end ma'am sometimes mm. uh, we have seen so uh, who is occupying the others place we are occupying the so obviously the uh, one which belongs to the place is not is a victim <coughs> uh, so uh, any take from your end about the union budget which was the union budget uh, which was presented yesterday has uh, given tax exemptions mm. uh, uh, has revised the tax slabs but if we have to forego the exemptions mm. so it seems to be uh, more of uh, giving options to the people so democracy itself is a ch uh, choice so we are given choices you can choose this or that and you can exercise what options are seemingly uh, beneficial to you mm -hmm. and there is seems to be a consumption and demand slack in our indian economy mm -hmm. so this uh, step where we have cut the income tax would put the uh, money directly in the uh, people's hand and this will result in a boost in expenditure and maybe demand cycle might pick up apart from that we have seen various measures for agriculture also uh, we have uh, the boost uh, uh, irrigation pradhan mantri sincha yojana we have got no money and even for the cooperatives the tax structure has been brought on par with the other uh, uh, mncs so all these seem to be there is nothing wrong <laughs> this seem to be a progressive measure but uh, the way they work out we can only wait and see one small thing i can say See the way you are sitting like this, you know. Why did you sit like this? Straight. Don't be yeah. Don't be very tense. Yeah. This is the even a little more, uh, you know, you uh, like this. Yeah. Okay. Sir. Okay. Practice it a little bit. Sir. When you sit like this, you know, it doesn't. Casually. Yeah. Sir. Looks a little too casual. Okay. Sir. All right. What is vlog? 
Vlogging is video logging, ma'am. Oh, okay. So. Uh, I'm interested to know what was your take on the Shaheen Bagh protest? And as an administrator or the uh, police official, how would you be managing the same issue if you would have been posted in Delhi? The Shaheen Bagh protest has been pri primarily against the Citizenship Amendment Act which has been brought about, ma'am. And uh, there is a lot of uh, misconsumption about the act. The act has been conceived to give uh, citizenship to certain minority communities. I am not discussing about CAE at okay. all. What so is their misconception? How do, you, how do you resolve the protest to be uh, uh, dissolved and people? The negotiations are the way forward. Mm. So, so first uh, right now there is no negotiation. There are negotiations, but we should intensify the negotiations, we should listen to all stakeholders mm. and we should uh, dispel with the fears mm. because uh, the suspicion is not about the content of that but about the intent of that. So we have to reach out Who's to the people. Who is protesting there? Uh, primarily uh, Muslim community, uh, uh, women, children and other students all these uh, and other communities also students or have gathered up in them. Then Abdullah, sir. Yeah. So, since your um, hobby is chess, can you tell me how many squares are there in a chessboard? Sixty-four, sir. Like, they are small squares. How many squares you can form within a chessboard? You getting my question? Yes, sir. You have an idea about Sicilian defense in chess? Yes, sir. So, what is the move for Sicilian defense? Sicilian defense. We start with the horse, sir. Horse. Fine. Since your optional is PSIR, can you tell me what is nuclear peace? Nuclear peace, uh, <coughs> it's a theory where we are telling that the presence of nuclear weapons is uh, has created global peace because of the threat of mutually assured destruction hmm. and uh, total nuclear annihilation. Okay. Na nations have uh, not gone for war with one another. Okay. okay. Can you tell me the three pillars of nuclear non-proliferation treaty? The three pillars of nuclear non-proliferation treaty is the first is that uh, you will be given a technology okay. for peaceful uses. Okay. Uh, second is you should not use the technology for uh, creating weapons and you should not proliferate this uh, the uh, technology to other NPT uh, non-NPT compliant countries okay. which can result in weapon procurement. Why a mobile phone is also called as a cell phone? So, do you think this veto power of UN Security Council is cutting the decision making of UN? Veto power was one of the primary. Uh, Russia joined only because the veto power was guaranteed to it. Otherwise, it would not have joined the UNSC. So. We need to go for UNSC veto power reforms because these uh, five superpowers they had the capability to enforce a decision. And when we uh, compare it with the League of Nations, there was equality among the nations, but the law was not uh, enforced because all the nations they were having equal power, so they did not implement the decision as they desired. So, veto power reforms should be given, sir, and perhaps maybe in a year they can use only veto power five times. Or if only five percentage of times something should be created. So you are speaking regarding that CAB bill, right? Yes, sir. So whether it is legally right for the center to direct the states to implement a bill like CAB? Citizenship is the central subject. Okay. So when it's going for states or legally, it's it seems that bound to. It's a legally bound you mean to say. Since you have Trinal Valley, so you have an idea about Kudangulam protest? Yes, sir. So, what is it about? So, Kudangulam protest were uh, regarding the nuclear power plant which was established in Kudangulam, and the people were, uh, local community were uh, afraid of uh, the implications of uh, having a nuclear power plant. First, initially, it, uh, they were uh, asking for uh, more compensation, then later on, environmental concerns were also sparked up. 
what kind of environmental concerns mm, one was regarding radiation sir and okay. uh, second it was uh, regarding the waters temperature which was being uh, uh, discharged back into the sea okay. so even the supreme court later uh, instructed them to uh, this kudankulam administration to discharge uh, the water at the temperature in which the sea level is only there because that area we are having lot of fishing communities they were afraid that it would impact their livelihood water adversely. from the kudankulam it should not increase the water i mean uh, water. discharging water should be equal to the sea uh, sea temperature so there are coolants there coolants are usually fitted with the hey, after that also there was some variation what, what coolant is used in what degree. coolant is used in kudankulam reactor i'm not aware sir do you know the concept of moderator in nuclear nuclear reactors no sir i'm not exactly able to what do you how do you think we should combat the fena menace of fake news sir fake news yeah, has become diversified so fake news is uh, it has it is not from one person or from one uh, uh, organization it has become decentralized anybody is being able to spread fake news so in order to counter this we should uh, enhance uh, people awareness only when a person knows what type of news we see what type of pictures we see and when they develop a critical judgment only then we can be uh, completely safe that we can counter such type of fake news and propaganda no institutionally or nationally how can we stop fake news institutionally we can go for implementing technology driven solutions sir, like uh, artificial intelligence machine learning and uh, flaggings like uh, if uh, community based uh, flagging of uh, news that this seems to be something of a lie fake something like that we can yeah yeah uh, mr sudan you seems to be from tinnalver nagar koil okay <coughs> last year supreme court has given a major ruling in favor of forest department with regard to a case in tinnalver right uh encroach forest land has been cleared by supreme court and asked the concerned company to hand over the land to the forest have you any idea about the case it's a landmark judgment sorry sir i'm so when you are meant it's a landmark judgment sorry sir i'm not acquainted bombay trading uh, tea estate tea company sir i didn't follow hmm? in manjole manjole i have heard sir the uh, tea estate company which yeah. was set up during british time That's, that is a old story yes, but now that tea estate has been asked to vacate and uh, give the land to the forest department sorry sir i'll go just check. given a ruling sorry sir sorry sir i, I perhaps i was not in network zone at that time and that's the major environmental judgment given by supreme court and the major advantage to the forest department i'll go and check on it sir <coughs> right have you heard of ipbs an organization ip ipbs we are studying international policy health international policy platform for biodiversity ecosystem services no sir i, I didn't hear about this it has given a report recently okay sir it has just the just three four months back which is almost threatening the entire humanity about biodiversity have you read the report heard about many threats from biodiversity in general threats are okay but this particularly about even to humanity no oh, sir i didn't read it yeah, completely unaware of completely okay or at least are you aware of any multilateral environment like multilateral environmental agreements yes. <coughs> paris climate change can be called on sir good mm. then we had kyoto protocol before that Kyoto Protocol is CBD. CBD. Then we have a Convention on Biodiversity. It's not that is what is CBD. Okay. Oh. Okay. Then um, we had uh, the International Panel on Climate Change. It is uh, uh, IPCC. IPCC is doing something. Then Ramsar uh, sites. Good. Okay. We are having that. Right. Uh, you must have also hearing about the new in the news about seizure of red sanders pardon me sir red sanders yes sir yes. mr mm. right 
what is the importance of it? Why they are getting seized? And what is the reason for it? smuggling happening? It sent us is a. It's Why can't we grow them and sell them, like tea? What prevents us? I'm not aware. Can we sell red sanders in the open market? No, sir. It is uh, only not? government can do that. Why not? What 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 is actually the hitch? Thing? Not aware. Sir. Have you heard of CITES? Another international treaty? Yes, sir. Uh, Convention on uh, Trade and uh, Endangered Species. Endangered flora and fauna. Flo endangered flora and fauna. It is. It comes under CITES. It is in the schedule. Any plant or animal in the schedule of society cannot be traded. Okay, sir. Unless until permitted by special permission. Yes. Right. So, then, we have uh, specialized in the especially communication electronics. Yes, yes, sir. Why do you choose this idea? It's of now the top. The electronic communication all over the world is not wanted. Sir. Why do you choose this world? Sir, in IS we can we have a lot of diversity and we have a lot of scope for uh, policy implementation and uh, and in the later stage we can also formulate policies. Sir. And I have been in Dantevada and I have seen the administration like how much the uh, civil administration district administration can play a great role. Like uh, I can recall IAS Tamboli sirs and uh, IAS OP Chaudhary sir. They had actually revolutionized the face of education and healthcare in uh, Bijapur and Dantevada, which were actually left wing extremism affected districts. But now they are excelling in uh, primary healthcare and we have a enormous multi speciality hospital which is almost catering to the entire southern Chhattisgarh. Oh. That is the so, only reason you have. So, I am telling. It's a small area. See, this electronic and communication, today you can go talk. The ISP has given you a lot of things. Yes, sir. Okay. That means worldwide you can give. This is only for part of the place you can. So, but we are able to directly impact the lives of people and oh, uh, it I results in a so lot good. of. Uh, Another thing, sir. When you are, for example, you are appointed as a collector. Yes, sir. Not in your own, you say hometown, they won't turn. Some other place, like that. Okay, sir. There are two groups. Always, you know, two groups are mm -hmm. meeting. It. You are on the spot. Okay? How do you tackle this one? They are having the gun with them, each of them. Okay, sir. How do you tackle as a. You, you need, like, a IPS officer for your help, or you directly go and. Uh, no, sir, I will have my uh, IPS officer counterparts and... Uh, no, they are on leave. If they are on leave, whoever junior is in charge... He is also not there. Then they I are will, not interested to come. Then I will directly go, sir. I will take the, uh, my immediate junior with me and I uh, will ask the SHO to come to that place. And uh, we will go and negotiate, sir, first. Because we'll try to segregate the two uh, groups. We'll not allow them to meet one another. Mm -hmm. So I'll send someone to that to meet the other party, and I will try to go to this party, mm -hmm. so that we just stall them and uh, buy us some time. Meanwhile, we can get the so district. One more thing, sir. Last question I will ask you. Yes, See, you have gone for the specialized the MA politics. Yes, sir. Political science. It's a must. No. Now, today the government has taken some policies, international policies. Yes, sir. Previous government also, which will be a better? This one or previous one? Sir, we, in Indian foreign policy, we are seeing continuum as well as change, sir. So, though the government changes, our policy does not per se change. We are recalibrating it only to certain extent. And our, uh, that has been a speciality of Indian foreign policy, sir. And, uh, we have seen an aggressive foreign policy where we have been more assertive uh, now recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, this has uh, given a strong message to the uh, other uh, international, in the international community that India can't be treated as a pushover. Earlier India used to be called as a soft state. 
because uh, even after the 2611 attacks it seemed that india would go for some retaliatory actions but we chose to go for other indirect measures to uh, put pressure on india which has been beneficial like the fatf gray listing now that was the consequence of that but now when it is there why we are against the pakistan and sri lanka no, even recently nepal yeah. nepal is prone to china so we can think about the Arbis. mandal theory which was given by Chana, chanakya also sir so he tells that our immediate neighbor will always be our uh, is it? enemy sir yeah. because we will always have some uh, boundary issues your if brother and yourself will be always enemy <laughs> So he say uh, it's a theory, sir. Mandel theory in politics. They are telling that so the neighbor of your neighbor. See, another theory is there. Which theory you will? Uh, it's a policy. The rule, divide and rule, unite and rule. As a collector, even you are appointed, which you you prefer? The unite and rule is much better, sir. Is it? Yes. It gives the result immediately. Divide and rule gives you immediately. Divide result. and rule will give us immediate results, sir. But in the long term, people will understand that. you are exploiting them you are uh, you using them that's and what today that foreign policy we are making it eh? that's what you told i am not telling no, so sir, we are not dividing and ruling we are actually trying to uh, become more assertive that uh, people uh, the neighboring country should not take us for granted because we have the gujral dagger oh, we have national uh, interest we have divided pakistan and bangladesh this our national interest only we divided we no sir we don't want to see we divide it and now we are ruling it domestic uh, compulsions of bangladesh resulted in that partition sir india because of its uh, refugee crisis and uh, because the people were yeah, any of it it's okay sir <coughs> uh, i'll give you what i have written and uh, others could contribute so i find you to be very good your uh, voice is good appearance is good english is good communication skills are good you are by and large restricting yourself to the question except that i found that when he asked about the asked the question about veto his question was different from your answer you slightly shifted the subject what he asked was has veto been a hindrance to taking decisions yes sir you turned it into how the system of veto can be improved that was not his question okay sir okay but among the candidates that i generally have trained and uh, encountered you are quite you are on the right side of uh, giving correct answers restricting them you are not talking too much you are not talking too less so i would rate you very highly as a candidate this this is my observation others can share yeah yeah um, i think Uh, with the current affairs, be sure yes, what is happening and what should be your take. Okay, ma'am. You drill or uh, whatever is the perspective. Uh, give your opinion based on that. And uh, uh, apart from that, uh, when sir was, I was surprised that you didn't know about the issues which are happening in especially the, environment. Yeah, environmentally because Tirunal Valley is known to that, and people sitting in Delhi also are aware. Yes, ma'am. So you should be uh, you knowledgeable about what has happened and what is in news. I'll go through my mail. Yeah, one small thing. Don't quote uh, Chanakya unless you are very sure about very it. Sure. <laughs> what That's what it? I. He, I they know might also suddenly what... somebody may be sitting there and he may say, okay, you seem to be very familiar, very thorough with Chanakya. So tell me this, and you'll unnecessarily get into a trap. Okay. Be okay. very cautious. Yeah, see yes. what happens. I want to tell you, you have told the same thing. Yeah. Okay. You see what happens. Yes. At that time, what happens is, now this is where you have to train yourself. You know, when I train people, I conduct. Now I have started conducting separate classes apart from the mock interviews, and uh, this is what I am trying to train them. You know, bigger danger is to say something which is not relevant. If you don't say something which is relevant, doesn't matter. Yes. Okay. But bigger danger is when you say something and they'll immediately pounce upon you. Okay? Don't use this type of things. Okay. Tanakya can uh, be very dangerous. Yes. Yeah. So to add to what Sir and Mama are telling, this veto point, like exactly, you diverged from the question. Okay. So sir. you are giving your own views or what you know about veto, but you should stick to the question. Sir. And there's something on basics of electronics you should know. Why mobile phone is called a cell phone? This range, you know, that. Uh, 
base uh, is called a cell. It's an hexagonal cell shape. Ah, sir. Okay. So I was about to ask why it is hexagon, why it is not circle. But since you couldn't answer this, I couldn't go further. You see something regarding why silicon germanium, why silicon is used, why IT hardware is not developed in India. And uh, regarding this nuclear piece, a uh, game theory, uh, you were good. Okay. Regarding pillars of NPT, you were good. Regarding Kudun Kulam, Kudun Kulam is a VBER reactor. It is a water cooled, water moderated energy reactor. So you should know what is okay. uh, coolant. Coolant, I think you know. What is moderator, you should know. And one thing, you should not use the word you in interview. Okay. You should not use second person in interview. Okay. Okay. Once you are addressing sir, you are telling, uh, you are using the word you. Okay. You should use third person. You should tell if one goes. Okay. If it, I think you are telling if you go there, something like that you are telling. The word you should not be used anywhere in interview. Okay, sir. And regarding center's direction to state uh, and uh, regarding uh, that thing, you were right. So conceptually and overall your presentation personality is uh, very good. Please try to maintain it. Some facts regarding electronics and okay, data. Sir, I think what time? She has already addressed my uh, <laughs> No, uh, good. Uh, say, really good. Go for an interview. When is the interview? February 20th, sir. 20th. You have to go with the coat and tie. Sure, sir. Of course, if they ask, due to climate, you can come. Mm -hmm. That will be a best thing. And be strict. Your chairman told You are told almost leaning. Very different. How is your good? Mm. Really good. Confident you have got it? You are telling it. Correct answer. Sometimes, don't know. Yes. If you do not know, that's okay. all. Yes. What? What is this combination? Sudan Abdullah. Sudan Abdullah. Ibn is a typical biblical name. Ah, Abdullah is a typical Islam name. So That happens in Kanyakumari. Kanyakumari, that's what? Kanyakumari, you know, you will have a Gopala Krishna who is a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Dennis who is a Hindu. Okay, the name, but the combination. They keep it like that. The combination itself is yeah, yeah, yeah. That is typical of Kanyakumari. Ajaumani. I was SP there. Ajaumani. Yes, like that only what you say. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll read out what I have written. Yes. If you would yes, like sir. to, yes. any yes. change yes. to be made, please let me yes. know. I have written, so then the following are our observations as, mock, as a mock board. Your appearance, your voice, your language skill and communication skill are good. Okay. This is a big uh, plus point for you. You know, once your communication skill is good, halfway through your feet. Your sitting posture, as was pointed out, is a little too relaxed. Please practice. Okay, sir. Okay. You tackled the question on polarity among nations well. On the question of Shaheen Bagh, you would do well to clearly criticize the approach. Okay? Okay, sir. See, since the law has been passed by the parliament and not declared invalid by the Supreme Court, you have to accept it without any doubt. Yes, sir. You understand? See, you must be very clear. Mm. You may have your own feelings. I may think this is an in unjust law, but this is a law passed by the parliament and the court has not struck it down. Ha, sir. Which means that this is a law that all of us have to obey. Mm. Now, when that is the case, you know, for a large number of people and that also a particular religious community coming and blocking a road for so many days, this is something which you have to clearly criticize. You should not at all have any doubt. Yes, and especially since you are a Muslim, you, you will be asked this question. You could be asked this question and any kind of hesitation will be visible. I think he's a Christian, sir. Oh, you are a Christian. That's, that's why I asked this question. But name is Abdullah. Okay. okay. That is why I asked this question. But everybody will take you as a Muslim, I tell you. Yeah, we will ask you the question. From your name, they may take you yeah. as a Muslim. Okay? So, be very, very clear in your mind. Okay? Okay, sir. You have to be absolutely clear. The moment they say Shaheen Bagh, you should say, sir, this is illegal. Illegal. That's all. Okay, sir. Why is it illegal? Why don't they have the right to pro uh, protest? Right to protest is different, but you cannot be blocking a road and preventing others from carrying on their normal activity. Yes. And plus, when you do this kind of a thing, you are creating potential for communal rioting. Yes, sir. You understand? So, you have to be very, very clear in your, uh, and that question about this, uh, you know, I will come to that also. On the question of veto, veto, you are not clear. The question was whether veto has been hindrance to decision making. You focused on how use of veto can be reformed. 
So you slightly shifted the focus of the question. You know what happens? It's a tricky question. Has veto hindered decision making? Yes, but for the good of humanity. Okay. Why was veto created? Veto was created only for this purpose, so that in case of doubt, we should not interfere. Huh. That is the purpose of veto, because once the superpowers begin to act on one side, one side or the other, it can create a world war again. So, if there is a doubt, if one of the veto powers says no, then it is no. Yes, sir. So, you should have said, yes, it is a hindrance, but then it is in the overall interest of humanity. Okay, and it is necessary. Hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. On the question, uh, then uh, your answer on fake news was good. You analyzed it very nicely. So too was your answer about joining IES. You could in IES you can be very firm. You can be very clear. Sir, this is my desire because it's your career. You know. Huh. You tell I will be able to serve this society. That's all. But then you know we are not civil. We are not servants. We are. We have our own life also. We have our ambitions. We have our desires. Okay. There is something which gives us fulfillment. I would like to do that. Hmm. You understand? Okay. Somebody may even say, then why did you join the join the communication, etc. Yes, I wanted to, to learn that also. I wanted to get that degree. Another thing is there, you know. See, when your people will ask, will it not go waste? No, it will not go waste. Because, see, some of the trainees, you know, when I am training them, they say, that uh, because as an engineer, I will be able to do this, I will be able to do that. No, nothing. Are you going to climb up the pole and uh, set right things? You are not going to do that. But what happens is, engineering degree gives you certain skills. Yes. It teaches you how to define a project, how to schedule it, how to monitor it. You understand? So give answers like that, very clear in your mind. Okay. Don't seem to be defensive. The moment he asks, why don't you do this? Why do you want to join IES? Yes, sir, I want to join IES. This is my ambition. This has been my ambition since, since childhood. Okay? okay? Don't start becoming defensive. Okay, sir. All right? Thanks. So, this is what I've written. If anyone would like to, then, you know, you could not answer some questions related to organizations dealing with environment protection that you should, uh, I think, look it up. Okay. 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 So, quite fine. God will bless you. Yeah. Anything you'd like to add to this? Oh, okay, oh, you are absolutely correct. Oh. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Too well.